Okay, welcome. So this particular video is going to start covering off some of the initial questions that people have when they start working with Udesley. You're obviously here for a reason. You're trying to figure out how to create different websites using Webflow. You love the builder, but you are getting stuck. So either you need to bridge out to different platform like Shopify or WordPress or Jamstack or something on the lines of that for a particular need. So maybe your client needs to evolve their business and they need to have a bit more robust e-commerce system. So they want to go to Shopify and you're sitting here going, bugger, I need to now create a new website for my client in order to continue to service them. Otherwise you'd lose them as a client. Now, Udesley is a fantastic tool in order to help bridge that gap. It does a very good job of basically enabling you to utilize the power of Webflow to its complete entirety and export the code pretty seamlessly to the various different platform of your choice, as long as it's one of those four. So what are those four? You've got Shopify. If you don't know what that is, that is for e-commerce stuff. It's really good. Then you have WordPress. So everyone knows WordPress has been around for donkey's longs. It's really great. It's very flexible, very extensible. Then uh, you have Ghost, which is fantastic for doing kind of old, more kind of editorial content or blog content, stuff like that. Very beautiful websites. And then we have Jamstack, which is, you know, kind of new kid on the block, which creates very nice static based, cheaply to host websites, but are very secure. Anyway, so Udesley gives us the flexibility in order to basically maintain our precious design and development framework that we love and very dearly, but break free of the shackles in order to kind of, you know, create sites for our clients and not feel like we have to try and shoebox them into a less than ideal scenario with using multiple different plugins and whatever it is that we can try and think of to try and make Wordflow kind of work for our clients instead of make a website that works for our clients. Anyway, so this particular video, should I say, is all about demystifying some of the common questions that new people to the platform or to the, the tool happen. And the first one being is always around cost. So this is actually a cheaper way of building websites than if you were to get a license cost for each and every different platform you're going to build for. So say for instance, you're building in Shopify and you're building in WordPress. If you are going to be using say Envelemental or Divi or something like that, you would need a license there plus the plethora of different plugins that you would need in order to make something anything of use. So it's such like the Crocker Block stuff. And then you have your kind of your Shogun or your different page builders that you'd have in Shopify. So instead of having to buy both of them, you're just buying the one. Now people go, well, what license plan do I need? So firstly, you would need the Udesley license and there's two ways of purchasing that. And it's pretty reasonable. So you got $15 a month for like a, a, a monthly fee and $115 a year if you wanted to do that. There is a fleet plan available, so you can kind of test and figure it out, but it does come with some banner ads that you would need to pay to get rid of. Think of it as like freeware with a big old stickers everywhere. So it's not meant for kind of fun final production. It's meant for just so you can test the waters. There's some things that doesn't work 100%. So if it's not working on the, the free version, it's just because there is some limitations obviously to protect you Desley. All right, so when it comes to Webflow costing, uh, this is where it gets a bit, I don't know, muddied. You don't need to buy a CMS hosting plan or anything on the lines of that. Only thing you need is to be able to export the code. So you could, at the bare minimum, buy an account plan, which is the light one, and that's $24 as of today, if you were to pay for it on a monthly, and if you paid for that on a monthly basis annually, it's like $16. And then obviously you could upgrade that to a pro if you needed more websites that you were creating, because with the light one, you can only create 10 projects. But you don't need anything more than that. So you just need that so that you can then create a project, you can build it from end to end. There's limitations with the amounts of collection items that you can create, but it's not an issue because we're not building it for Webflow, we're building it for another platform. So only thing we need is to be able to export the code. Cool, okay, so that brings on to the next question is a lot of people think that you have to create the entire site and all the products, all the collection items or whatever you wanna call them, like categories or whatever it is, you need to create that all within Webflow exporter then manage all the stuff in Webflow. <laughs> That couldn't be further from the truth. Basically, what you're going to be doing is you're not building for Webflow anymore. You're building a theme that is going to be populated and leveraged within the different platform. So say, for instance, you're creating an e-commerce store, you could create two or three dummy products so you can move stuff around. 
but you don't actually need to load the products on there because you're going to be driving all of the product systems within Shopify or WooCommerce, for instance. So the main thing that you need to be doing is just basically creating an environment that allows you to create a template. It's not being published on Webflow, it's being published on one of the other platforms. So what does this mean from a development mind shift? And again, this comes into the process and a lot of my other tutorials, which you can find, I'll link them at the end to kind of the two getting started series for Webflow and Shopify, is you need to change your mindset because it doesn't really matter what's being displayed on a Webflow page. It could have like code snippets everywhere as long as the destination platform is able to interpret and use it to your advantage. So things like custom meter fields or if you're embedding an application or something like that, it doesn't matter what it looks like within Webflow. It's about how it manifests and renders on the destination platform. And that's an important mindset to kind of have in your back of your head when you're working through this is just because it looks fine on Webflow doesn't mean it's going to be a perfect conversion across into the platform of your choice. You still have to think how the other platform, the end destination is going to work. And that is a pitfall that a lot of people fall into because they think, okay, fine, I build it here, I click a button and it pff, magically transfers. And it does that for most things. But the more advanced functionality that you embed, you're going to have to at least have some understanding of the destination platform. And again, a lot of the stuff I go through in more detail on a granular basis in my other tutorials. So if you are interested, keep on watching and uh, yeah, leave a comment if you have any questions, I'm sure to help you. Okay, number next one. So one of the cool things about Webflow is that you can copy and paste modules and whether or not you use something like a component library like Flowbase, which is awesome. So if you haven't checked it and you use Webflow, check it out because they are actually bloody good. And what's amazing as well is that Udesly provides a copy and paste university where you can one click and copy a module across so that it already comes across with all of the elements that are configured for that particular platform. So if you wanted like a cart area, you could literally go and click that and copy and paste it across and job done. All your forms, just click it there. Everything's configured. So all you have to do is style it. And you just have to go to Udesly's university and click copy the module and bring it across. Now, obviously that doesn't go into the more advanced topics, but if you're just starting out, you're not gonna need to really hit that. You can get very, very far with just the base stuff. And if you start to struggle, again, my tutorial ch channel will help you out, hopefully. Okay, so apps. People often ask, can I use apps and plugins? And yes, because the main reason being is that you wanna get away from the restrictions of Webflow so you can extend the capabilities of your websites. So the answer there is yes, Udesly does support apps. All you have to do is basically understand how they need to be integrated. So sometimes you need to create the structure for it to work and sometimes you need to embed a bit of code or sometimes you don't have to do anything because it detects what it is. So say for instance, like a, a swatch system that's looking for the add to cart option fields, it will kind of do it. Now I go through a couple of my preferred apps for different purposes on different platforms and you can find those in the rest of the tutorials but equally so your requirements may differ and the thing is is that with enough perseverance you can you can install and you can get them to work all you have to do is just read some of the documentation and figure out how it's going to work if not you can ask me and I'll try and help you another question is basically once you've finished your development of your website do I have to update and maintain all my products within Webflow for it to go across no Basically what it is, is once you've created that template file, once that, that you've converted it, you've spun it out, you bring it over into your platform, you've created a template. Those two things, two things are not linked. They, you, when you update one, it will not update the other. If you wanna make a change to the website structure or move something around, add a new section or stuff like that, go back to Webflow, make the change, and then we export the code. You can do kind of tactical overwrites, so you don't have to overwrite the whole theme it is an advanced topic and I am going to get to it. I've been promising it for a while, which is how to manage your sites through version control and Git. So you can go from a very basic level to super advanced. And the great thing is that Udesly gives you the flexibility to do that. So yeah, to round that out, no, you don't need to add, edit or delete products within Webflow. It is purely handled on the platform of your particular choice. Now that comes to the next question. Can I delete the Webflow website once I'm finished developing? You could unless you want to make a change. So don't do it. If you're going to be making any forms of amends to the site in the future, you need to have that Webflow 
site still there so that you can make any amends so that you can re-export the code. Otherwise, you're gonna have to basically rebuild your entire website, which sounds like you wouldn't wanna do that unless you really like hurting yourself for some reason. A little bit weird. So yeah, so don't delete the projects within Webflow, only unless you literally are never gonna to touch that website ever again. Okay, so that sums up and rounds out some of the questions that get asked quite regularly. Now I'm sure there's plenty of more and I'm more than happy to answer and help you out. So if you've got anything that you're not sure about, place it in the comments below and we can talk through it and I can hopefully steer you in the right direction. Ultimately though, you will not regret learning Udesly and being able to leverage the power of it to grow your business and your ability to service your different clients in different regards. If you have any questions that I haven't covered off, pop them in the, the comments below. If you feel like buying me a coffee, yep, thank you very much, I love it. And finally, I'm gonna place a couple of video markers here, which are different playlists. So if you're interested, kind of exploring, yeah, hope to see you around the chat. Cheers, bye.